Martin Frio. And I'm Larry Kane. And coming up tonight, what else? Parades, the president, the people of Philadelphia and America. Join us for team coverage of the Bicentennial Bash tonight. Also tonight, we'll take you behind the scenes of the gala event seen coast to coast. And the lighting of the Ben Franklin Bridge lights up the skies of Philadelphia and signals the culmination of the 200th birthday of the nation's constitution. I'm Stan Stovall, live on the Royal Viking Sky, and a special edition of the Channel 10 News Updates is coming up next. Ever since your post office invented express mail overnight delivery, others have tried to copy our eagle, but it's not so easy. You see, Express Mail Overnight Reliability is close to perfect with the most convenient locations and prices as low as $10.75. About half what most others charge. So we're pretty hard to imitate. So use the original Express Mail service from your post office. Percent juice. Lemon lime taste. It's a standing ovation. We got the juice. Diet too. Channel 10, Philadelphia. a day and can you believe it all happened here all in a period of 12 hours i'm larry kane and this is the way it is tonight september 17th 1987 200 years after the constitution was signed the sights and sounds of an american celebration filled the night sky over philadelphia late tonight and that's not all within the last 15 minutes a dazzling array of lights have danced all across the ben franklin uh, bridge tonight in addition to an impressive fireworks display stan stovall is live on the ship royal viking right now at penn's landing what a night stan Alan, Larry, you're absolutely right. It was quite a night. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Stan Stovall, coming to you live from aboard the uh, cruise ship, the Royal Viking Sky. And we had a bird's eye view of the long-awaited lighting of the Ben Franklin Bridge. Right now, let's go to a little videotape and show you that lighting, which came about about 38, 39 minutes ago, precisely 10.30. Uh, a stunning display of lights uh, before a large and enthusiastic crowd that has been down here at Penn's Landing for most of the day today. Uh, a colorful array of lighting, and certainly uh, it's a, a colorful addition to what we have seen for the past several months. Right now, I have Mayor Wilson Good with me, and uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, you know, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of criticism about whether or not this is going to come off or not. Here we are. It's history, the finale. We made it. Uh, I think it worked very, very well. Uh, Bill Rouse, his people, Jim White and his people, Kevin Tucker, Bill Richmond, Maurice Clifford, a uh, whole team of people, Fred Stein, a magnificent example of teamwork, of coordination, and I'm very, very pleased. Uh, a, a feather in your cap uh, naming Willard Rouse to be the chairman of the We the People 200. He pulled it together. It's incredible. We had a great day today here he, in Philadelphia. He carried out some very good plans in a magnificent way. My hat is off to Bill Rouse and Fred Stein. But the service departments also were out there all day long coordinating thing. I'm very, very pleased. As mayor of the city, uh, the city did you proud today, didn't it? I'm proud to be a Philadelphian. <laughs> we all are. We all are. Mr. Mayor, I know you want to get out of here. The crowd is uh, dissipating. We're not going to hold you. It's raining, and everybody wants to get out of here. Thank you for joining us tonight, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, 
All right. Now, right behind me, uh, basically, the fireworks display just finished, I guess, about eight minutes ago. And we're also going to take a look at some of the fireworks, if we can. There you go. One of the biggest and brightest fireworks displays ever. Just a fantastic display of fireworks. Uh, the whole fireworks display itself lasted a grand total of about uh, 22 minutes, one of the longer fireworks displays I've seen in quite some time. And judging from the reaction from everyone here on board the Royal Viking Sky, uh, they definitely appreciate it. You can hear comments throughout the boat all evening long. Ooh, look at this, look at that. Uh, so certainly an indication that the, the people came to see a great fireworks display, and they got what they came to see. Uh, Larry and Alan, we will be back to you later in the program, but first we're going to go to Brian Williams, who's down on Penn's Landing, where everyone uh, happy about the fireworks display, happy about the lighting of the Ben Franklin Bridge, and he's among the throngs of folks who are heading home tonight. Brian? Stan, the gang is all here indeed. They're heading home quickly, though. We're getting some rain, intermittent, off and on all night, but I must say, it's as if Mother Nature knew that Philadelphia had something special to do today, because for the most part tonight, she's been very, very kind to us. Thousands here tonight. Let's take a look at the, some sights and sounds from Penn's Landing. This is what they must have meant by we the people. Throngs of people of all kinds on Penn's Landing tonight. The waterfront was packed early on, partly in anticipation, partly to watch tonight's flotilla of boats down the Delaware. Some were here to make a buck, reading a little quick capitalism into the Constitution. A lot for sale, a lot of food. Some were here to party and some to make a fashion statement. Because they're fashionable, I like them. They're odd. <laughs> they haven't attracted any aircraft that you know of. Uh, I don't think so, not yet. <laughs> we did find several who hadn't forgotten why we were all here tonight. We're lucky we're allowed to do this. We won't be here in the next one. There's a lot of things we're allowed to do, other people aren't allowed to. I love the whole thing. Everything. I wouldn't miss it. How do you feel about the Constitution these days? Great. It's great. We needed it. We need they all came out in the dark of night. Things that glowed. Matching kids, matching shirts, balloon hats, and a few reminders of times of old. From up above, a sea of people all along the Delaware River. Then the rain came. Umbrellas popped up. The brave determined to make it a big night and stick it out until the grand finale. I hope you have a color set. That's all I can say. A few thousand people down at Penn's Landing tonight. Quite a few people. Very few problems. All of them treated to a good time. And right now, what's a little rain after the show Philadelphia just put on for the entire nation? Time to go back into the studio right now with Larry and Allen. Okay. Brian, sounds like you had a great time. Absolutely did. <laughs> okay, thanks, Brian. While well, people from our area enjoyed that big party at Penn's Landing, people from across America got to share in the gala at the Civic Center on national television tonight. Viewers were treated to a star-spangled television event with performers ranging from Philly superstar Patti LaBelle to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Now, that exciting program was just one of this evening's gala We the People events. We begin our live team coverage right now with Bob Orr. He's at the Civic Center in Philadelphia, and Bob, the stars were out tonight, and they weren't in the sky either. <laughs> That's right, Alan, Larry, a real glitzy night here at the Civic Center. A lot of people having fun. Many of those at home saw the gala just conclude here on Channel 10, but there were a number of people, hundreds of people from across the Delaware Valley who were here this evening in person early to be a part of what they saw as a chance to be a part of history. Dignitaries in tuxes pulling up in limousines gave the gala the look of a Hollywood opening, but others dressed casually and arriving on buses reminded all that this was a people's celebration. And the glitzy two-hour entertainment spectacle inside the Civic Center did not disappoint. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. I think so. My parents came here from Czechoslovakia. They immigrated in 1959, and it was just wonderful to see. After the show, some people left for the bridge line and fireworks. But 1,600 invited guests moved next door to the Pennsylvania Hall for a dinner and reception honoring government leaders like Attorney General Edwin Meese and entertainers including Walter Matha. An extravagant wrap-up to a day-long party that's drawing high marks. The day has been spectacular, and it's, uh, it's really a credit 
to we the people, to Willard Rouse, to all of those who made it possible, and it's a credit to the people themselves. They now realize that the Constitution is alive and has contemporary meaning and importance to every citizen of this country. I'm very proud of everything that uh, We the People 200 has done, and I'm thrilled with the way this day came off. And I think most people around Philadelphia feel the same way that Governor Bob Casey and Willard Rouse feel about the events, particularly about the show tonight. A lot of great remarks from people coming out of the entertainment gala. But I wonder what Dennis Cunningham thought of the show. Dennis is standing by live now in our newsroom with his own unique view. Dennis. Yes, thank you, Bob. And I'll tell you, now, I've been at the rehearsals for that show all this week for one reason or another and have watched an enormous and awkward enterprise become a smoothly spun show. So I may be a bit too close to this constitutional gala to give a totally unprejudiced view, but in the true American spirit, do let me give it a try. <laughs> It seems that, of late, we cannot have an event of national significance without having a television special that goes along with it, and so it was with the 200th anniversary of our Constitution. At times, it was an uneasy balance of the, of the hallowed Bison halls Daniel. of justice and the, the decidedly less hallowed halls of Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rich Little. Yes, it could get a bit top-heavy with a few too many anthems, and some might say it was a bit too long, but who could complain about two hours in exchange for 200 years? Besides, it was also a surprisingly thoughtful and provocative examination of just what the Constitution is and just what a surprisingly living document it is. But the court finally hit its stride with a case that established once and for all its importance as an equal partner in the affairs of government. At still other times, it was an acknowledgement of just how wide and wonderful a diversity is this country, and at still other times, just a good patriotic entertainment. Philadelphia, Philadelphia, that's where it all began. Yes! But at the best of times, it was a stirring tribute to the miracle that is the United States of America. Well, uh, anyway, no matter what you or I thought of the telecast, there could be little disagreement that this was from early today to this very moment, and beyond this, indeed, a worthy and wonderful celebration, Larry and Alan. Tell me, Dennis, did Rich Little do you tonight? Uh, no, he didn't, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, he, your name might. came up, but, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. It was a great show, I agree with you. It yeah. was a Dennis. wonderful show at the Civic Center Dennis tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. One of the most spectacular sights of the day was the Constitution Day Parade. Now, the parade was built as one of the biggest in American history, and as Stephanie Stahl reports, this $3.5 million extravaganza certainly lived up to its expectations. <laughs> And so now, let the procession begin! Undaunted by the rain, we the people, proud Americans, carried on the tradition and took to the soggy streets of Philadelphia to celebrate freedom and justice. A procession of states honoring the original 13 and a tribute to our founding fathers, they marched past the hall where it all started and traced the colonial days, days of blacksmiths, farmers and bakers. This parade commemorating 200 years of freedom is billed as one of the largest in American history with 20,000 participants. But another Philadelphia tradition, not quite as old, has an even bigger parade every year. That's the Mummers, 22,000 strong. Mummers, bands, and floats from all over the country strutted and strolled for two and a half miles, setting the patriotic stage for the 40th Commander-in-Chief. And I can think of no more fitting tribute to the Constitution's bicentennial than ringing the centennial bell, and with it will be rung bells all over the nation. Channel 10 News Update. After the music, after the color and excitement of the parade, came the big ceremony at Independence Hall, and Dennis Waltering has that story. 
The Centennial Bell rang out. Hundreds of doves were free. And red, white, and blue balloons released after President Reagan praised the Constitution as a triumph of human freedom, a covenant with humanity that sets the United States apart from other countries. You could go from here to live in another country, France, but you wouldn't become a Frenchman. You could go to Japan and live there, but you wouldn't become a Japanese. But people from every corner of the world can come to this country and become an American. Because of security, only the invited and specially credentialed could watch all of this in person. Clinton Gumbel was not among the privileged. And, uh, you couldn't see him at all? No. <laughs> uh, so we did see a couple demonstrators uh, get arrested. <laughs> Charles and Nancy East of South Philly got tickets by writing a letter to the White House. I feel that we all should be appreciative of our freedom in the United States. Mrs. East, what was your feeling, the ceremony? I'm very proud. And I wish you would come back again. After saluting the Constitution, President Reagan helped raise $275,000 for Senator John Heise's re-election campaign at a $500 a plate lunch. And the President was asked about his nominee for the Supreme Court by a five-year-old girl from North Philadelphia. I asked the President, would Judge Bork be good for black people? And what did he say? Yes. In the case of Judge Bork, the American people, I'm certain, are finding him to be intelligent, prudent, firm believer in the Constitution, and a strong defender of individual rights. Out here earlier, President Reagan said the American Revolution truly began 200 years ago when the Constitution was signed. He said that's the first time the notion that all men are created equal was finally made a part of a government. At Independence Mall, Dennis Woltering, Channel 10 News, update. And coming up next, the latest on the board confirmation hearings in Washington and find out what Delaware Senator Joe Biden says about charges that his speeches are ripoffs. All that and much more tonight as our special coverage of We the People moves on on this historic night in Philadelphia. of our Constitution, the U.S. House acted on what one congressman called the worst violation of civil rights this century. Members approved one and a quarter billion dollars in compensation for Japanese Americans held in U.S. internment camps during World War II. 60,000 people still living would also receive apologies for being jailed simply because of their Japanese ancestry. The Senate, by the way, expected to pass a similar bill, but a presidential veto is now threatened. An incident between and, uh, tonight's weather has turned tragic for two teenage girls in Trenton. Here's why. Officials tell Channel 10 News that the two teens were, s were standing at the time on the corner at uh, West State and Parkside Avenue when they were struck by lightning. The unidentified 14-year-old was killed. Her 13-year-old companion is hospitalized in stable condition tonight. Obviously, some very dangerous weather moving through the area. And Herb Clark has the weather update, Herb. Yeah, we've got a lot of scattered showers around. We're doing a lot of we the people and celebrating the Constitution and what a day it's been. I'll tell you, Philadelphia... From three hours this morning on network television and two hours tonight came off beautiful and just so many people should be thanked. The weather did not cooperate. It rained for the parade this morning, but it did go through and it didn't interfere a tremendous amount. This is the scene tonight. It's rainy through the area. Heavy showers scattered around and some will continue to come on as the night goes on. We're not out of it tomorrow either. 71 degrees now. 80 was the high. 69 this morning. We've got a big blob of angry weather that's just off to the east and north of Philadelphia, and more to come. It's not a tremendous area. You'd think once we get rid of this much, it would look better, but unfortunately, the things keep coming and coming, and as they approach the east, they're picking up a lot of humidity from down south and off of the ocean, so they're being fueled from here, and one cold front after another sets them off just as they move into our area. That's going to continue on through tomorrow. Forecast says for tonight, that we're in for cloudy weather, of course, showers, some of them heavy at times. It'll cause some small stream and urban flooding and that sort of thing, the typical uh, heavy rain weather. 65 degrees overnight. Now, some of those will have some thunderstorms with it, and they can do some waking up of the area or your neighborhood as they come through. Now, we, all we do is change tomorrow. The forecast stays about the same. Showers, thunderstorms heavy at times, and again, the possibility of some small stream and urban flooding and about 75 degrees. Let's look ahead. Do we find much improvement? Not a lot. For tomorrow, thunder shower 75. It does taper off tomorrow night, 
But on Saturday, we'll have some light stuff, light rain and drizzle and generally gloomy weather, 75 degrees. After that, it looks a little brighter. We'll pick up some sun each day, but some showers every day are a distinct possibility. High every day at about 78 degrees. So heavy stuff for probably most of the next 24 hours. Heavy at times, not a steady rain, but heavy showers, similar to what we had off and on today. There's some just to the west of Philadelphia, so the next hour or two, I think we'll see some here. If this forecast holds up, this will make it the fourth weekend in a row now we've had rain. Oh, it'll hold, it I'm afraid. Another, not many bright spots, are they? Okay. But what a great day this has been. Yeah. It has been. All day long, of course, we've been bringing you the pomp, the pageantry that has made this day so very special. Now some of the history behind the signing of the Constitution. It was May 25th, 1787. A delegation of men led by George Washington gathered in Philadelphia to make some changes to the Articles of Confederation. Instead, they wrote an entirely new document, the Constitution, signed by 39 men four months later. Delaware was the first to ratify to sign 200 years ago today. Those signatures have special meaning to the descendants of the signers. Bill Baldini reports on their day here in Philadelphia. Freedom and the Constitution was ushered into Philadelphia today in many different ways. Bells were ringing. And it also came in with a roar. The Constitution was also celebrated by the descendants of the original 39 signers who walked in the garb of their ancestors. Their joy was reflected not only by other people who lined the streets, but also by other descendants of the original 39. The beautiful a, celebration. Does all this give you a special feeling since you were a descendant of yes, one of the original signers? Yes, it certainly signers? does. It was just more or less, you know, history, but then it really made history come alive and really mean something. There were at least 700 descendants in the crowd, and they came from all over the country and Europe. They also came in all age categories. Mommy. What? My mommy. Where's your mommy? She was. She's still in the parade. What? She's still out in the parade walking. Okay. For some, the trip was short. For others, like Cynthia Haskell of New Hampshire, it was quite a ride. And it's well worth the trip down. You did come pretty long way. Yes, we did, all the way from New Hampshire. And it rained on your parade. Yes, yes it did, but it's wonderful. It's well worth it. What made these descendants special in the past was, frankly, an accident of birth. What made them special today, however, was that many of them traveled great distances just to be part of our celebration right here in Philadelphia. Bill Baldini, Channel 10 News Update. Still ahead tonight, challenges still ahead. While remarkable, the original Constitution did not guarantee freedom and justice for all. Harvey Clark reports on those left out. And we will find out how that We the People celebration has affected Philadelphia's image. It's a good one, too, around the country. Stay with us. Stovall live again aboard the Royal Viking Sky uh, docked here at Penn's Landing, a world-class cruise ship that uh, began its maiden voyage to Philadelphia. It all began in Alaska some 17 days ago, and it made several stops along the way. For example, it stopped in uh, San Francisco, stopped in Los Angeles, went down to Central America, through the Panama Canal, uh, up to Florida, and then on to Philadelphia. And in a little more than an hour, it will, uh, it will take off and head on to New York City. You know, it's been a very busy day, but it's been a day filled with festivities. And for the most part, we've been able to see quite a bit, bit of them from right here on the uh, Royal Viking Sky. For example, about an hour ago, we saw the uh, the long-awaited lighting of the Ben Franklin Bridge. I think we are going to see a little bit. There you go. There you go. We've been waiting for this for some time. And folks, let me tell you, it was definitely well worth it. Uh, for the most part, we had front row seats for that lighting. And this project was uh, funded in part by uh, uh, corporate sponsors. We got some, uh, some private funds, certainly. Right now, joining me is Fred DeBona, who is the chairman of the Ben Franklin Bridge Lighting Committee. Fred, what do you think? It looks great. Oh, I think it's absolutely super. All of us are very pleased. And really a great thanks to the many people of Delaware Valley who contributed dollars, contributed their time. Uh, to make this thing tonight a success. Everybody helped out, from little kids donating a nickel, a dime, uh, to, to major sponsors donating several thousand dollars. Everyone pitched in for this effort. It truly was a partnership. Uh, we raised about a third of the dollars from government, a third from foundations, and a third from the private sector. Yeah. And it ranged from the $5 contribution up to the 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we're just pleased. I've, I've got to tell our viewers, I asked Fred earlier, you know, everybody on ship was asking, now is the bridge going to look like this every night from now on? And Fred said to me, well, we might cut down on the fireworks just a little bit. I, <laughs> but for the most part, the bridge will be lit just it, like this, it's, right? It's a lasting tribute, you know, when all the parades are gone and all the hoopla is gone. It is the lighting of the Benjamin Franklin that will remain as an architectural, architectural signature for this city and the warmth and the relationship between our two great cities and our two great states. Well, our hat's off to you. A job well done and to all the people who helped uh, make this a uh, reality. Thank you very much. Okay, Fred. Thanks a lot. Now, the fireworks show, which began immediately after the Ben Franklin Bridge lighting, uh, that was a sight to behold. I mean, just a tremendous fireworks show. It was billed as the biggest and best ever of the year and was staged by the world-famous Grucci Fireworks team. Certainly a night of splendor, a night of pageantry, as the entire Delaware Valley area, especially along this stretch along Penn's Landing, is lit up for this gala extravaganza. Joining me now is author George Plimpton. And George, earlier today we talked about the possibility that fog was uh, rolling, and this was much earlier in the day, about uh, 14 hours ago. As it turned out, the fog moved out, and it was a beautiful night for fireworks. Oh, it was extraordinary. It was an absolutely perfect night. There was supposed to be a lightning storm coming through. It veered off, coming in from Harrisburg. It went away for some reason or other. You know, 200 years ago, which is really interesting, uh, there wasn't a fireworks show, but there was an extraordinary spectacle of... Uh, Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, and people remarked on it, and it was on this same day 200 years ago. So here, 200 years later, we have the uh, fireworks yeah. show, which matches an Aurora Borealis. Now you're wonderful. You're big on fireworks. You, you told me earlier you really like them. Give me a comparison. How does this shape up to some of the other big fireworks shows you've seen over the last couple of years? For example, the big uh, Statue of Liberty celebration in New York a couple of years ago. Well, it's certainly comparable. The, uh, of course, the uh, Statue of Liberty show was mammoth. I mean, it, was, it cost ten times as much as the one that we had here. And money, unfortunately, has got a lot to do with it certainly does. fireworks shows. And in a way, I thought this was a much more interesting, subtle show. It had different moods and different reflections and, uh, uh, and much more interesting uh, to listen to music to it. Nope. Uh, whereas the Statue of Liberty show was too massive. They had a million dollars worth of fireworks they had to send up in 20 minutes. So you had no time to sort of catch your breath. But here there were nice, nice shifts in, in uh, effects and, and moves. Yeah. By the way, I've got to ask you, the paper line here, the Eagles, they need some help. We're not going to get you to don an Eagles <laughs> uniform, are we? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. There are a lot of teams around the league which seem to need help at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Just pulling your leg. Welcome to Philadelphia. We hope you come back real soon. Oh, it was a wonderful day. It truly Thanks was. for joining us. Thanks a lot. Okay. Right now we'll go back to Alan and Larry in the studio. Maybe Buddy Ryan's watching, Stan. You never know. <laughs> By the way, Stan, you had a bird's eye view of it all. The lighting of the Ben Franklin Bridge, the fireworks display. It was quite exciting for you and for all of us on this. You stage. know, I, I feel very fortunate in that I was down here and I had a chance to see all the activities uh, uh, down here. Uh, you know, you guys, uh, you missed it all. I'm sorry to say, but uh, you'll just have to stick around for another hundred years and maybe you'll catch the next it's act. It's only a once-in-a-lifetime affair. I don't think we'll live <laughs> to be 140 years old. Yeah, we'll exactly, check it exactly. We'll check it next time. <laughs> It'll be nice if we can do that, though. All right. Thanks. And the planning behind this constitutional celebration goes back months, even years, of course. We the People gives the people of this country a good look at the city of Philadelphia. Suzanne Bates reports how all the free press affects the city's image. <laughs> Philadelphia basked in the national spotlight on this 200th anniversary of the Constitution, city leaders predicted it would help erase a tide of negative images. Trash in the streets, the corruption of a judicial system, mass murders in two Philadelphia neighborhoods. These are some of the visions forgotten today by visitors and people who live here. I wasn't sure they'd pull it off, but they did a magnificent job. I think so. I think the image is better. I have negative information as well, but I sort of shut my eyes to the negative information. Why? Because I want to feel positive about Philadelphia. We the People Chairman Willard Rouse, credited with the success of the celebration, says his hope is to overcome those hangover negatives which have dogged Philadelphia for years. Uh, but more than that, I would hope that people, at the very outset and at the very least, perceive Philadelphia as a city that had paid homage to the Constitution in a very dignified, enlightened, joyful way. Eleven years ago, after a somewhat less successful bicentennial celebration, Philadelphia seemed to fade from the national conscience. Mayor Wilson Good believes there is a way to maintain the momentum after we the people. I think that we have to market uh, market the history of the city, uh, market the fact that this is the birthplace of this nation, uh, and bring people here based upon that. We also have to, in my view, market what this city has to offer the future. 
Mayor Good believes much of Philadelphia's problem is people don't know much about Philadelphia. Today's celebration is the longest coverage of an event in television history, and a city couldn't pay for that kind of promotion. In Center City, Suzanne Bates, Channel 10 News, update. There are some serious...